hybrid energy something. Uh, and that's also art if you were confused. Now that everyone is confused and I can see it on your faces, raise your hand if you feel like you're suffering from the inability of understand contemporary art. I'm not the only one <laughs> in the world. I'm feeling better now. No. Okay. Why it should be understood? That's uh, that's a good point, and I will uh, get to this. Um, okay. <laughs> so um, I will tell you a quick story. A while ago, I went at the museum, at the modern museum with my boyfriend, and at some point, I saw him very angry and frustrated, not happy. And I asked him what's happening. And for serious, he said that he is annoyed because he could not understand the art he was looking at. And I somehow understood, understood him, so a question came in my mind. If the art is made for the public, why can't we understand it too? So I made some research, uh, because I heard a lot of people saying that art do not exist anymore, or it's very, or at least it's very bad. And let me tell you that art is alive and is more diverse than ever. It's actually the focus that has changed. And I will explain it to you. Uh, we tend to look at the painting or a piece of art for about five to 10 seconds and expect to understand, but that's actually not the case anymore. Our mind is trained to see a picture and to understand it visually but now all you can see are some random shapes or lines with the title that like the letter of a butterfly. It's normal to look at a butterfly, to, to uh, try to see a butterfly, so it's normal to get angry, and there are a lot of, and I found a lot of reasons for this. So today I will present you three, and I hope I will change the, a little bit the way you are perceiving nowadays art. So, um, the first thing that I want to explain is that art nowadays creating, created its own world. And that world is quite unaccessible for the general public, being very different from the idea of music industry, uh, film, advertising, because they are trying to reach um, so ma um, as many audiences as they can. But art is trying to be obscure, it's trying to be um, to confuse you, to get you curious, to come and actually see it in the museum because people nowadays lost interest in, interest in this subject. So they are actually making you ask yourself, what's this? Why am I so interested in this? Why can't I understand it? I want to come see it in the museum, in the museum and experience the, the actual art. So, uh, Let's try to understand the art. In the, in the 20th century, the artists started asking, asking themselves why things are what they are. So uh, I will explain you by showing you this <coughs> artwork that is changing the focus from the shape and the colors to the meaning. And this artist is asking, how do we know a chair is a chair? Is it because of the word chair? Is it because of the object chair? Or, or is it because of the photographic memory of a chair? I will give you more example. This one is focusing on light to create the feeling of hot summer days. This one is actually easier. It's a 30 tone sugar sculpture created in a 130 years abandoned sugar factory. And the idea is to raise awareness about the slavery that happened in the past and how sugar industry changed our history. And this one simply wants to evoke some type of memories. As you can see, Contemporary art is actually simple. You just need someone to explain it to you. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, the third reason why we do not quite get uh, 
contemporary art is because it is new and it gets you out of your comfort zone. But that happened to, at the 20th and uh, at the beginning of the eight, uh, 19th century, when the impressionism started to, started to develop. And it was quickly rejected because the impressionists um, introduced the concept of beauty relativity. So other beauty concepts were destroyed, there were no um, perfect perspectives, no anatomically human figures, no clear contour, actually nothing they were used to at that time. The impressionists were considered the rebel of that time, and the art became a single impression of the artist. In 1863, Edouard Monet introduced this painting. And it was a little bit shocking because, as you can see, there is no beauty standard, there is no Venus in that, in that uh, painting. And uh, actually, it's a prostitute waiting for her client. And you can see the direction she's looking at. <laughs> you are actually the client. <laughs> so, um, as you can, <laughs> as you can expect, this painting created a lot of controversy, and it was um, exhibited at the Salon of the Refused Artists as a form of uh, shape. Even though the impressionism nowadays is one of the most important art periods and this painting cost a lot of money. So I wanted to leave with this thought. Do we really want to be uh, remembered as that generation who refused the Edward Monet of our time? Do we really want to be at the Salon of the Refused? Let's just accept the fact that we are not quite ready for this type of art and get rid of the idea that art is good or bad, and accept the fact that it's neither. And it takes time, patience, and understanding for us to actually start to appreciate this type of art. Hi, everyone. And hi, Corina. I want to start by thanking Corina for her time in presenting us her subject on contemporary art. Why? Because I feel that what she presented is something that I couldn't care less before her presentation. And now I'm actually curious about it. So in that sense, you won me over. I hope that was one of your objectives uh, that you uh, managed to succeed on. Corina uh, had a project where she needed to research a topic on something that she either knew a bit about or nothing at all, and she had to show us that she did that, and I believe that she managed to fulfill that role. Why? Because, as I said before, I couldn't care less about contemporary art, because everybody repeated the same old stuff, hey look, I need to just don't understand if it's actually good art, whereas Corina actually explained to us why she believes that contemporary art is a good thing to look into, and to be open-minded about. Oops. She gave us three main reasons for that, and she made them very, very clear. Uh, her structure was very clear from the start. She introduced us in the subject of contemporary art by giving us a test that we weren't really prepared for, that I, for one, got very into, and uh, she pretty much read our minds with it, or at least my mind, that's where I come. Um, and then she, after she hooked us for me, Today, if I'll say us instead of me, please forgive me for that. Um, I'm very interested. Um, and then she proceeded to tell us why contemporary art is actually something that you might be interested in. And she said that it is something that uh, sparks your curiosity. And that might be something that people don't necessarily realize about. Because when you see something like, like eh, what's that? But that's just the idea. It makes you go, hmm, instead of just yeah, whatever. Then it also, it is something that changes your perspective from what you're looking generally at, from just the beauty of it, to the actual meaning behind it, which I think she made clear when she presented us those three or four slides with those statues that were looking very interesting. We maybe didn't know exactly what they meant, but then she told us what they meant, and I was, whoa, I did not think of that. Now I'm actually looking at it 
with another uh, perspective, in, not literally, uh, uh, with other eyes, not literally, but uh, figuratively. And she also mentioned that uh, contemporary art is something that is new, in essence. It started pretty much when they wanted to do something different from everybody else, and that may, of course, be something that uh, uh, makes you feel uncomfortable, as mostly everything is when it is new. I mean, think about everything that you do that is new, especially something that you don't necessarily want to do, and you probably don't feel very comfortable at first. So I think she made those points very, very clear. What I think she could have done a bit better was to engage with us just a bit more. She stayed here a bit, letting us look at the slides, sometimes even uh, looking at the slides instead of us. And I felt that she lost us a bit there. Um, I feel that she could have also spoken just a bit more loudly, especially because she stayed somewhere here. I kind of heard her from there, but maybe some others didn't hear her that well. And also at some point, she just let the slides run instead of just closing them, when we pretty much didn't need to look at them at all, because the point was made, and now her attention has been on her. Um, so, to not uh, take this too long, uh, I want to end my speech here by saying that, uh, Torina, I congratulate you on, from my perspective, uh, reaching your objectives for the speech, mm -hmm. and I believe that uh, you now know what you should be focusing on on your next one, and thank you again very much for actually opening my eyes to the idea of looking into contemporary art with a different perspective from what I've done up to this point. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.